program is sponsored by National Canine Academy. WNIS Radio and Sinclair Communications do not endorse or warranty any statements or claims that are made or products or services that are offered by this sponsor. Who let the dogs out? Hold, 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 hold. Welcome to National Canine Academy Radio. I'm your host, Dan Stallings. I'd like to wish everybody out there a happy new year. And a happy new year to you, Dallas. You too. That's uh, Dallas Bull and my co-host. Happy new year, Damien. Hey, happy new year. Thank you. Uh, Damien is, of course, the most important man in the room, pushing all the buttons and dials that keep things running smoothly. And we always keep him busy every week. So I uh, want to welcome you guys to the show. We are uh, so happy to be on uh, first of the year here. We're going to start... Uh, the year off with our So You Want a Dog segment. We're going to take you from the thought process of adding a dog to your family and making sure it's a wise decision, all the way through uh, proper care exercise training and even senior care. It's going to take us uh, probably the better part of six or seven months to do that. We're going to have experts from all over the country and even uh, abroad uh, from uh, the UK, other parts of Europe, uh, dog trainers, etc., come on and offer their uh, advice and expert opinion. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. We're all going to learn a lot, just like uh, we did last week. I, I, I had no idea there were such things as kennel auctions, so that was completely new to me. It kind of blew my mind a little bit when we had uh, Teresa Strader from uh, National Mill Dog Rescue come on. So we're going to learn a lot. We're going to have a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to start off with uh, – uh, so you want a dog, and we're going to have a couple guests come on uh, later on. Uh, Karen Backen from D.C. Wine Rescue is going to come on in the next segment and talk a little bit uh, about the responsibilities of, you know, once you have a dog, uh, what it entails, just to make sure everybody fully understands because, you know, we run rescue here. We, we run Mid-Atlantic Wine Rescue right here in Virginia Beach, and, uh, you know, we see a variety of things happen. The noise you hear in the background is our one of our working <laughs> canines, Alvin, who's busy at work on a uh, – a rawhide bone right now. We always have one of our dogs in studio with us, and Alvin is one of our very special dogs. He's uh, the original Wonder Wine. We uh, uh, had him come in through our own rescue, and we had him for, what, about 18 months, Dallas? And nobody was interested in him. Nope. Nobody. We had, like, a couple people look at him, but they always chose another dog. And uh, fortunately for us, Alvin is now a uh, uh, dock diving world record holder. He set and still holds a current record in one of the events. He is uh, the first wine runner in the world to have earned an invitation to the uh, uh, Doc Dogs World Championships. He actually earned a couple of invitations to that. He's also uh, probably the best bed bug detection dog on the East Coast. And he's uh, an awesome, awesome geese control canine. We actually have videos. If you go to YouTube and look under Maverick Detection Services, you will see some incredible videos of that boy. So Alvin's uh, joining us in the studio, and we'll talk a little more about his recent exploits here. But uh, to kick off the So You Want a Dog segment, um, Dallas, when you, uh, you've you adopted several dogs yeah. from us, what, what were some of the things that made you decide you wanted to, when you first got um, your first dog, what was, the, what was it you were, that made you decide you wanted to, obviously you worked with them, but right. you, had, you had cats, right? I have one cat. Yeah, and you had, uh, you had some other fish or something? Or... Yeah, I had fish, So what, what made hamsters. you decide you wanted to add a dog to your family? Um, I've always wanted a dog since I was little. My mm-hmm. parents are always like, no, no, too much responsibility. And then, you know, I met Jake when I first started there mm-hmm. and was, fell in love with Jake. He was, I, a, he was a puppy at the time, right? Wasn't he like yeah, yeah, eight or nine a, months yeah, old? Yeah, yep. Yeah, no. so, and, and what are some of the things that you went through before you decided? Because I know it wasn't like as soon as you saw him and he was up for adoption. Mm-hmm. You know, what were some of the things that you went through and thought about before you decided to actually adopt him? Um, just to make sure I had time for him, make mm-hmm. sure he got enough exercise, something to do, things right. like that. So, And you were able to bring him back every day. Oh, yeah. So that, that helped a lot. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people, you know, we, we have a lot of clients who bring their dogs and drop them off every day while they're at work. Right. So even though they don't have time for the dog, they make sure the dog's needs are getting right. met as far mm-hmm. as exercise and socialization. What about you, Damien? You just you yeah. just got a, a pup, what is he, six months yeah. now? Yeah, six and a half. Yeah, so what, and what made you decide to... Well, uh, my girlfriend uh, had a dog for a long time, and she lost the dog. So we were going to, you know, we just wanted uh, another dog, so it was time to do it. Right. 
time and, to make that decision. And, and, uh, and you guys talked about it? Or? Sure, sure. And we shopped around for a little while and, you know, just talked to a couple people and researched uh, and researched and researched a little bit more. And then mm-hmm. uh, and then found uh, what we considered the perfect, perfect fit for our situation. And see, more people should do that. I think mm-hmm. far too many people make that impulse decision. Yeah. And a dog, Puppies are cute, but that's a big decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, even if it's not a puppy, it could be an adult, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, and there are people that prey on that, that, you know, the cuteness of the puppy will yeah. sell. And, and unfortunately, some people, you know, make that impulse decision without thinking it through Mm -hmm. and it can not just be just getting a dog it could be the breed of dog they're getting and and we see that so much and that's why i wanted karen to come on in the next segment but you know if you're if you're thinking about getting a dog you really need to sit down and ask yourself some questions and do exactly what what damien does what we advise a lot of our clients to um even before they add a second dog uh is to think about the commitment you're getting into and it is a commitment i think uh you know over the last 20 years so much has changed as far as the way we take care of our animals and our dogs in particular, and people do a much better job, and they are part of the family. They keep them inside. They sleep in the, the room, sometimes even in the bed with them. Um, but it, it is a, a commitment to the dog for the dog's life. Some dogs that could be, you know, like the large giant breeds, seven to nine years. With some of the terriers, it could be, you know, 15 to 18 years. You just never know. And then they could live a hopefully a full, happy, healthy life. Others could be, you know, medical basket cases um you know like my lexi developed uh, mega esophagitis um you know the last uh, few months of her life i had to hand feed her sitting upright and hold her like that for a while it's just you have to be ready anything can happen and we've had some dogs surrendered because people couldn't afford the medical care so it's it's one of those things where you definitely need to you know do your research make sure you have the time do you have the space you know, are you going to get a dog that's going to require a lot of exercise and needs a lot of room to run? And it's not just a big dog. I mean, I, I, there are a couple of breeds <laughs> we've had that shocked me with how active they are. Mm-hmm. One is the Danes, yes. especially like Lucy. Oh, my yes. gosh. She thinks she's like a, a lab. She's out there jumping over other dogs in the field. I had no idea Danes could be that active. It's the same thing with Sophie. Right. Same yeah. Thing. Yeah. They're out there just living. And Apollo's out there running around. Yeah. You see pictures of them on our Facebook. But what about the, some of the Yorkies we have? Yes. They're just racing all over the place Winnie, in the small dog area. Winnie's one of them. Yeah. And the, some of them love the pool, getting mm-hmm. in the pool. You know, we have uh, a couple of Alaskan Klikai, which looks like they look like basically Siberian Husky puppies when they're adults. Um, are, they, are they the uh, common, the, the miniature Husky uh, that's out now? They're, Is it similar to that? They're, yeah, they're similar to that. They're actually, uh, I just learned from their owner, uh, we have two of them that come now. We have mm-hmm. a third that's getting ready to join us. And um, I just learned they actually have three. They have a miniature, a toy, mm-hmm. and then the standard clique eye, which was news mm-hmm. to me. They're a very rare breed. I'd never seen them before we opened up. But uh, we have one of them that loves the water, actually dives in the water. He posted pictures on the Alaskan Klikai Facebook page and just got tons of responses. How did you get him in the water? Like, you don't understand. He, he dives in the water. <laughs> and there are pictures, I think even on our, fa- our uh, website, of him diving in. And we, as soon as we open the pool up, when the warmer months, splash, he's the first one in. Mm-hmm. So, but, it, you know, and it just goes to show that every dog is different. When you do your research like you did, Damien, that's, that's just general characteristics of each breed. But each dog is an individual, as we know from training. Every dog is an individual, and you have to treat them that way. Just like we train them that way, you have to treat them that way. Um, so um, that's one of the things you need to really ask yourself. The other thing is patience. So um, what we want to do is make sure that everybody's aware of what they're doing before you go out and rush out and get a dog and think about you know buy versus adopt, puppy versus adult, their pros and cons. You can certainly call us. Um, you know, here uh, at uh, National Canine Academy, 757-289-2700. And uh, we can uh, help you and assist with uh, making some suggestions with your lifestyle and uh, you know, what your dog might need and get them off to a good start. So uh, we're going to have our guest on uh, Karen back in here in just a few minutes from uh, DC Wine Rescue and talk a little more about that and why people give their dogs up. So hopefully you never will. You're listening to National Canine Academy Radio on 790 AM WNIS. 
Carolina's largest auto show returns to the Virginia Beach Convention Center January 10th through the 12th. Every major manufacturer is on site with hundreds of new 2014 models in a completely non-selling environment. Virtually every make and model will be on display and no pressure to buy. Vote for your favorite convertible and be entered for a chance to win a $500 gas card. The Hampton Roads International Auto Show is fun for the entire family. The big kids can play at the Power Sports section sponsored by GEICO. Kids of all ages will love SpongeBob. Free tickets for the first 1,200 military with ID each day. Active duty, retired, or dependent. There'll be free parking and lots more. Visit hrautoshow.com for complete details and $3 off discount coupons. Order your favorite Papa John's pizza and get a $3 discount coupon. The 2014 Hampton Roads International Auto Show at the Virginia Beach Convention Center. Friday, January 10th and Saturday, January 11th from 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. Sunday, January 12th from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. Presented by your Hampton Roads Automobile Dealers Association. If it seems like mold, mildew, and ugly cracks have taken over your bathroom, you've got to call E.T. Lawson. E.T. Lawson has set a brand new standard of excellence of both quality and affordability with bathroom remodeling. E.T. Lawson can transform your bathroom to a comfortable, safe environment with a walk-in bathtub or shower. Be safe and don't hurt yourself. Ouch. Yeah, we don't want that to happen. Call now to receive $500 off a complete bath remodel. You can even see your beautiful new luxurious bath before you start. Visit ETLawson.com. E.T. Lawson, serving you since 1919. Hey, little green guy, you sound a little weird today. Well, I am E.T., and English is my second language. Whoa, okay, calm down, little guy. Call 722-1928 or visit etlawson.com. E.T. Lawson. Service that's out of this world. Hey, hon. Hey, sunshine, back already? Yeah, I went to patient first. They're open on weekends. So what'd the doctor say? Pneumonia. You're kidding. (laughs) You'll have to wait on me hand and foot until I feel better. Oh, is that so? (coughs) They showed me my x-ray. Pretty cool, huh? Patient first does x-rays? Uh-huh, and they even did my blood work right there. (coughs) It's like a one-stop shop. Did the doctor write your prescription? She did, and I picked it up there, too. One-stop shop, remember? Wow, patient first is making this stuff a breeze. Not so fast, dear. I'll need some frozen yogurt, um, some magazines. For over 30 years, Patient First has provided urgent care for routine injuries and illnesses from 8 in the morning to 10 at night every day of the year. Patient First also offers primary care for those without a regular physician. No appointments needed. And there's always a physician on duty. Now in Hampton on West Mercury Boulevard. Learn more at patientfirst.com. Wouldn't it be nice to walk your dog without them pulling? This segment um, is brought to you by National Canine Academy, and we can help. All breed obedience training and behavior modification. Located at 5503 Virginia Beach Boulevard. Call us at 757-289-2700 and also on www.nationalcanineacademy.com. Welcome back to the show. We would like to uh, welcome Karen Backen from DC Wine Rescue, who's on the line with us now. How are you doing, Karen? I'm good. How are you, Dan? I'm doing very well. Happy New Year. Thank you. How are all your guys doing, all your kids, your furry kids? Oh, they're good. We're <laughs> playing in the snow yeah, out got, here. That's right. You got yeah. a lot of snow up there. We did. And, you know, a lot of people think, uh, you know, just like as I did when I moved up here with wine runners from uh, Florida, that uh, they don't do well in cold weather. But as soon as it snowed when I lived in D.C., I found out otherwise. Yes, they love the snow. They <laughs> they don't even wear their coats when they go outside because they're so busy running and playing. You know what? And I did that. I bought jackets for them, believing that. You know, they were my first wine runners. I had them all dressed up. And we went out there, and they were digging in the snow, digging their head in it. I, we stayed out long enough. I said, I got I got cold. I'm going back in. And they <laughs> stayed out there and played. So, yeah, you know, every, just because you read something doesn't mean it's true about the breed. So Exactly. But, uh, well, thank you uh, so much for coming on. And, um you know, we're starting our So You Want a Dog segment, and, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the thought process of adding a dog to your family and some of the things you should ask yourself, and I thought it'd be a good idea to have you come on, um, and how long have you been doing rescue now? Uh, 20 years. Wow. Just just a few years. Yeah. <laughs> how many, so how many, how many uh, dogs or rescues have you taken in, you think, roughly? Oh, gosh, over a thousand. Oh, wow. wow. Mm-hmm. And how many uh, do you have currently? Currently, I have 16. A thousand? <laughs> Oh, wow, 
That's a I lot. You, you placed a lot then. Wow. I, I have. So well, the reason I wanted you to come on is, um, you know, talk a little bit, uh, in your opinion, about the things that people should should really consider, whether it's a wine runner or other. And as you know, wine runner is not the easiest dog in the world to own. And I don't know about you, but I know we typically don't adopt out some of our younger wines to first-time dog owners. Not wine owners, but first-time dog owners. True. And there's a reason for that. And, and what are some of the things you think people should consider before adopting a wine runner or any other dog? Well, they really need to consider what their lifestyle is. Are they home all the time? Are they working 15 hours a day? Do they have a long commute? Um, what's their personal exercise level? Are they going to go out and play with the dog or go on hikes or you know, swimming, whatever they, they do, is it, the dog going to be included? Because, you know, Weimaraners in particular are a very active breed, as you know, mm -hmm. and they require a fair amount of exercise, whether it's throwing a ball, taking them running, um, just something to keep them stimulated. Yeah, uh, they, they require to be entertained, as we say. They need to be entertained, entertained yeah. yeah. Uh, or they will find something to do, and it's they not going to be entertaining to you. Exactly. So, and, uh, you know, Damien, even though the weather is kind of odd for this time of year, you just took your dogs for a hike or yep. dog for a hike. Your Absolutely. Puppy. Yeah. Yeah, and we uh, did a, a nice couple. Actually, we hiked uh, the other day in the freezing cold, too. Oh. Dog love the freezing cold. Yeah. So, uh, yeah they, puppy play date for later. They feel fresh and uh, energetic. And, yeah, we have some, oh, some yeah. uh, breeds at National uh, Canine Academy that would rather be outside in the freezing weather, even when we want to come in. But um, what, what are some of the reasons, Karen, that you've seen – um, dogs. What are some of the more common reasons you've had dogs surrendered? Well, the most probably the most common reason is they don't have enough time. They realize that they've gotten a dog that requires a lot of attention, and they're not home. They're working, or they they're running their kids around to soccer and all kinds of activities, and the dog is just staying home and becoming bored and doesn't have anything to do. And then they do things they aren't supposed to. Well, you know, and some people though, um, you know, will take their dogs with them. Everywhere they yeah. go. I mean, we have some families that take the dogs, and, you know, of course, I've heard the story of the dog ran out there on the baseball field and grabbed the ball, and every, nobody could catch them. That's happened, too. But, you know, right. <laughs> you know that is that is somewhat, you know, comical, and, you know, we all need a little comic release every, every now and then. But if you have the dog trained, you can do so much more with them. You can take them places, and they're well-behaved. You get complimented on them. Instead of leaving them home or locking them up, and then they get into trouble. And that's why, right. you know, daycares like ours are so busy as well. So, yeah. and then... Um, and I'm sure you've had it too, where there are people who, who couldn't afford the proper care for the dog, whether it was something specifically medically related, you know, heartworm treatments are not inexpensive. Not at all. And then, uh, the GI obstructions, I think everybody's encountered that at some point or other with uh, rescues. Right. And if you keep your dog entertained and uh, active, then you aren't going to have him where he's going to be eating something and it's going to require a very expensive vet bill to get it out. Yeah, exactly. And we have... Um, we've actually um, had dogs signed over to us at the vet's office because they could not afford the treatment, and we you know, picked it up and, and took care of it from there. One of them will actually be in the uh, upcoming book, Beyond the Gray. His name's Buddy, oh. who became a, uh, a therapy dog and actually worked with some autistic children who only opened up to him. They were going to take him home and let him die a painful, miserable death because they couldn't afford the treatment. Right. And that is something you need to consider. Um, one of mine, one of my puppies, um, not one of the one that I uh, bred, but one of the ones that I got, uh, shortly after we opened National Canine Academy, um, Duke, he's my million-dollar baby. Um, he, he had an immune-mediated disorder. His own immune system attacked him, and it cost me about $6,000 to keep him alive. He is now six years old. He is a normal, happy, healthy wine runner. He's one of our geese control dogs, and you would never know anything happened, but it can pop up at any time, and you have to be prepared for that. You have to be prepared for that. You have to have something set aside or a plan or some insurance mm -hmm. or, or whatever because you just never know what can happen just like people right and and with active breeds like warm runners boxers are, are just as active um even you know some of the bully breeds and some of these guys too one thing you need to consider is you know they have very little coat and no fat they're going to get scratches especially if they're playing rough you know uh as you know karen from doing hunt tests and field trials you know they go out and do what they were bred to do they'll get scratched up and marked up sometimes that may require some veterinary care so that's something you need to consider Whereas you look at some of the breeds like the German Shepherds that have the big, thick coat. Man, they can run through a briar bush. Nothing ever happens. So that's something to consider when you're choosing a breed. But it's not just time. It's not just space. It's also a financial commitment. Uh, right. Plus, you have the cost. Of, as as you know, uh, you know, with running a rescue, you have the veterinary bills. 
Yes, big vet, big, big vet bill. Right, and that's even with healthy dogs. You know, the spaying and the neutering, which will need to be done. Um, the routine vaccinations. You have the heartworm treatment every month. So there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just, you know, the cost of a bag of food per month. There's a, there's a lot more that goes into it. Um, now, you have uh, you don't just rescue wine runners. You do um, some mixed breeds and such. And yes, I take wine runner mixes, or if there's another sporting dog in need, I'll take them also. If I can't get them to their rescue, I'll take care of it. Wow, so you do keep busy. And you, you yeah. cover uh, much of Virginia, Maryland, uh, D.C., part of West Virginia. Uh, and occasionally Tennessee and Louisiana. And see, the one thing I find interesting about that is you cover some areas that are that are pretty uh, rural. So they have a lot of room, and still you have a lot of surrenders. So people have the space for some of these dogs. But, but they aren't making the time. That's generally what it is. They're not making the time. They didn't realize how much time this breed particularly needs or really any breed Mm -hmm. so so that that i mean that's very telling that people aren't making the time for them why do you have a dog especially you know people that just keep them outside right if you're just going to keep them outside why do you even have a dog that's that's what i usually ask that's a good question um and then um you know if they don't have the time to spend with them they usually don't do the training which compounds the problem right so when you um when you do adopt them out um, in your contract, as I've seen, ours is very similar. You uh, you go over things with them about making sure they get exercise, making sure they maintain the socialization and do the training or maintain the training, right? Exactly. Yes. And do you yes. uh, and and you know do you follow up with them on those kind of things or? I do. I keep an email list where you know we have activities and stuff that everyone's invited to, and we we also have a Facebook page that pe- um, pretty much everyone is on mm-hmm. for advice or you know whatever they need. And, you know, the thing is, you know, we, when we talk to people about the training, I mean, we try to uh, get a lot of our rescues uh, at least to the point where they're not jumping and they can walk them on a lead. And, uh, you know, a lot of our clients also have them have us train them before they even go home, which I strongly recommend. Um, but some of them are already trained depending on how long we've had them. But that is such a huge, huge thing that really sets a dog up for success. It's not just will they sit or lay down, but it's really how the, it's, a, it's the relationship you have with your dog. It is, and I work on basic uh, obedience, and if they have an issue, a jumping up issue or whatever, I'll work on that before they go to their new home just so that I can show the owner what they need to do and, you know, how to maintain that so that they don't run the house. Right, and then, um, you know, we get occasionally get puppies in in the rescue. It's rare, and they usually don't stick around long. But Not at all. It, but it's one of those things, too, where you have to caution people. But I, I don't know about you, but I've had several people come in, and they immediately want to know, what's the youngest dog you have up for adoption? And that's the wrong way to go about it. It is. It is. They, they, a lot of people have in their mind that they want a puppy to grow up with their child. Mm-hmm. But it's not going to happen. It's going to be the parent's dog, and because a, a young child is obviously not able to start training with the, the dog and, mm-hmm. and to work on the jumping up or the puppy biting or any of that stuff. And you know what? So se- frustrating. Senior dogs are awesome. They are. They're just, mm-hmm. they're such good dogs, especially if you're new to the a breed, like a wine runner, for example, or you're, you don't have as active a lifestyle. Um, you know, they're already set in their ways. What you, what you see is what you're going to get. They're generally uh, well house trained. They're generally, you know, good around people. Um, and it's just, I, I get people come in all the time and meet a few of mine in the front lobby and they want, they want to know how old they are. If they can adopt them all, like, well, Charlie's eight years old and no, he's not up for adoption, but that's what you get with a senior dog. And, you know, those are the same people that want to know what the, what's the youngest I have up for adoption. So, you know, they're asking for one thing, but they really look for another. So, um, Most people want a dog to come that's just going to walk in their house and do everything right. Right. And you can go get a puppy from a, a great breeder, and that's not going to happen. I mean, you've got to be exactly. patient with them. Yes, well, very where, patient. Where can, uh, where can people look you up and uh, see what kind of dogs you have up for adoption? Well, I have a website, which mm-hmm. is www.dcwineclub uh, slash rescue. And I also have a Facebook page. You can just search it, D.C. Area Weimar Runner Rescue. And that's pretty much where most people find me. Very cool. Well, uh, Karen and I work very closely together. We're rescuing these uh, beautiful Weimar Runners. So, Karen, thank you so much for uh, joining us. And uh, I'm and sure we will be in touch soon. And uh, Happy awesome. New Year to you and all your furry kids. Thank you, and, and the same to you guys. All right, thanks. Take care, Karen. Okay, thanks. All right, you've been listening to uh, National Canine Academy Radio on WNS. We'll be back in just a few minutes. 
Karen McHugh. Freezing precipitations making a mess of roadways and runways in the northeast at New York's JFK. An incoming Delta jetliner skidded off the runway. Service was temporarily suspended and more is on the way. I'm really concerned about this, especially across the I-95 corridor. You can see mainly rain being reported in D.C. We have freezing rain in Philadelphia and we will see freezing rain being reported in New York's airports as well. Fox meteorologist Janice Dean. Bitter cold with wind chills possibly as low as minus 70. Won't keep the Green Bay Packers from hosting the 49ers in today's NFC wildcard game. At Lambeau Field, today's temps will rival those of the 1967 Ice Bowl. It's going to be a rough day for uh, the players on the field and the fans in the stands. I just can't imagine sitting sitting three hours with those kind of temperatures. Meteorologist Chris Franks with the National Weather Service. Fox News, we report, you decide. KC Volkswagen Subaru and Used Cars is the number one stop for all your automotive needs. We have the largest selections of new Volkswagen Subaru and used vehicles with over 600 vehicles to choose from. We are conveniently located on J. Clyde Morse Boulevard. We have the lowest prices. No money down. Your job is your credit. We are the bank. Guaranteed financing and a 20,000 square foot state of the art body shop. Right, Dad? That's right, Nadia. And here at KC Volkswagen Subaru and Used Cars, we treat you like family. Your time's important to us. So KC Volkswagen Volkswagen Subaru and Used Cars has made it easy and convenient for you to get your car serviced. Drop your vehicle off at our service department with no appointment necessary and get a free loaner vehicle on any service over 30 minutes guaranteed. And if you're looking to buy a new Volkswagen or Subaru, come see us. We'll beat any price or pay you $500. So what are you waiting for? Come see us at Casey Volkswagen Subaru and Used Cars and test drive a new Volkswagen or Subaru and get a free gas card. Call 988-1200. That's 988-1200. Call now. See dealer for details on price guarantee. Hello, this is Tom Knox, the founder of Senior Corps. According to the AARP, over 43 million adult children provide care to an aging parent. But the most overwhelming part for many is finding the real solutions to what their aging parents actually need. Well, that's what we provide at no cost at Senior Corps. Senior Corps provides a free in-home assessment with a certified senior advisor. This individual is trained in home safety, financial options, insurance coverages, and most importantly, how to keep seniors at home and with the best care possible. Call Senior Corps for a free, no obligation, home assessment today and find your solution and the perfect caregiver for your loved one. Call 6400-557, 6400-557, 6400-557, or go to SeniorCorps.com. Christopher Newport University's Ferguson Center for the Arts presents the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, Saturday, January 11th at 8 p.m. Joining the RPO is principal guest conductor and violin soloist Pincus Zuckerman, who has remained a phenomenon in the world of music for decades. Acknowledged as one of the UK's most prodigious orchestras, the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, RPO, enjoys an international reputation for bringing audiences worldwide first-class performances and the highest possible standards of music making. Selections range from Bach's Violin Concerto in A minor to Brahms' Double Concerto in A minor. Don't miss the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, Saturday, January 11th at 8 p.m. Tickets starting at just $27 are on sale now at fergusoncenter.org, the ticket office, or by calling toll-free 855-FERGTIX. Visit fergusoncenter.org for details. Season sponsored by Ferguson Bath Kitchen and Lighting Gallery. This is a paid commercial program that is sponsored by National Canine Academy. WNIS Radio and Sinclair Communications do not endorse or warranty any statements or claims that are made or products or services that are offered by this sponsor. Welcome back to National Canine Academy Radio. I'm your host, Dan Stallings. I'm here with my lovely co-host, Dallas. And, of course, Damien on the dials. This segment is brought to you by Maverick Detection Services, the nation's largest 100% independent certified canine bed bug detection team and the region's only canine geese control team located right here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. You can uh, look us up on the web at to detect and to serve.com and you can reach us at 855-597-7827. If you have any uh, problems with nuisance geese or you think you may have a bed bug problem, give us a call. 
and we can uh, definitely help you out. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny because um, people kind of laugh about both of those things when we do them. When we show up with our dogs, they're, you know, the geese thing, people are like, geese, really? It's a problem? Yeah, they're a problem. <laughs> they're a big problem. Uh, we were actually um, featured in the, um, um, the Hampton Roads Business Journal in uh, August, I think it was. It was a cover story, the geese. It was a cover story. That's how big of a problem it is. And uh, what our guys do is they go in and uh, we basically chase the geese off the property. It's very humane. They never hurt them. We simply harass them, as the government calls it. And it's perfectly legal uh, locally, na- nationally, statewide. It's uh, uh, legal. There are companies all over the country that actually do this, but we are the only ones based right here in Virginia Beach. And uh, we have uh, six dogs that are uh, geese control canines. We actually go out and chase them off properties where they're doing damage to the landscaping. Um, they're causing all kinds of problems, health code violations with uh, leaving you know, geese poop everywhere and people stepping in it. And they're also uh, can be aggressive, especially in the springtime when they're looking to nest. They will be mm-hmm. aggressive. There was a lawsuit. I don't know. Did, you heard about that, didn't you, Dallas? The lawsuit in Chesapeake? Mm, the, I don't know. The, the gentleman uh, uh, that was attacked by like six or seven geese while he was at work. No, I didn't know that. And he actually sustained an injury when he fell. Yeah, and it's uh, there's videos. You can go to YouTube. And you see plenty of videos. I mean, they can get nasty. Yeah, I've gotten attacked. Or I've yeah. gotten chased right. before. Yeah, so. and um, it's kind of funny because, um, you know, people kind of laugh when we first talk about it, but then if you talk to them long enough, everybody's got a geese story. There's actually uh, one online where a kayaker was fishing and they had the camera set up on him, and mm-hmm. a goose, he got too close to the nest, and this goose flocked yeah. on him and uh, knocked him right out of the boat. Yeah, yeah. They <laughs> it, can it got be, viral. And they're, they're a big, big bird, good-sized bird, too. I mean, so, um, you know, our guys will go out, and it's, it's funny because, and again, there's videos on YouTube under Maverick Detection Services um, where our guys, it's like playtime for them. When we pull into one of the parking lots, of the facilities that we serve it's like daycare for them they get excited they're looking out the windows of the vehicle and when they see them before i can even stop and let them out they're going crazy they know exactly what we're there for they know what we're going to do and uh they know exactly how to do it and it's kind of funny um that uh you know we've gotten so many dogs involved in it now started with just duke and indy and they were amazing they're the ones that really launched it a division we call avian management authority and it has just taken off from there, and uh, we have both residential and commercial accounts now, and it is growing widely. We're actually expanding into other states. I know uh, Trent down in Tennessee has already uh, got a couple airports lined up, a golf course. Golf courses are a huge thing. If you've Even around here, if you go to some of the golf courses, you can't even hardly walk on the green without stepping on something, or sometimes, in, again, in the spring, they'll get aggressive. You know, I got a question for you on just that subject uh, on the geese on when you run them off of an area, how mm-hmm. often do you have to continue the treatment of that area so that they, uh, they don't come back? Um, well, you know, when we first start, we, um, we actually, uh, go out two or three times a day to that property. Uh, the very first thing we do before we even take dogs out is we survey the property to make sure it's safe. We know the, you know, the landscape, uh, lay of the land, as they say. And then uh, we know pretty much how we're going to do it, how many dogs we're going to need. And uh, once we set everything up, um, we take one or two of our dogs out, uh, depending on the size of the property and the extent of the issue, and whether or not there's ponds involved. I have you know, water dogs, some dogs that, like Alvin. Um, he won't even hesitate. He, I mean, I swear, if you, if you watch him, you can hear him yelling, cannonball! But... Um, he, um, you know, we go out with two or three dogs uh, two or three times the first week because what you want to do is you want to upset their, their pattern. You know, uh, one of the uh, properties in Chesapeake that we call on, they had a problem for 20 years, 20 years. They tried everything. They tried um, uh, floating alligator heads in their pond. They tried the – you see, you're laughing. That's why I mean, people <laughs> laugh. funny, which, but yeah. But they tried the um, uh, silhouettes – of uh, coyotes all around it. They tried chasing them with golf carts. This is a 70 acre commercial property. They tried chasing them with golf carts. They tried the chemicals. They actually uh, hired people to come uh, from the government to trap them and take them away. And we've been calling on them for just over a year now. And the geese maybe show up once or twice a month, a nice. month. Whereas they were, th- and we're, t- we're talking uh, both indigenous and migratory flocks that were probably in the numbers of about 80 to a hundred. And the dogs have the time of their life. That's the best part. They're getting plenty of exercise, and they're doing what they were bred to do. The only difference is, you know, we don't actually let them catch them. We'll call them back before they get close. But um, 
So that's uh, that's one of the things. And again, it's just funny to uh, to watch. That's why I post videos on Maverick Detection Services on YouTube because it's it's just funny to me to watch them, and each of them has their own way of doing it. But uh, you know, the other thing that we do is um, you know we do bed bug. Uh, detection with these guys we have the largest independent company in the country we have eight certified bed bug dogs that are working right now uh, four of them have been working for a year and a half in this area here alone uh, we have one that we sent up to uh, northern virginia for a while actually karen was a, a handler at the time uh, from dc wine rescue and uh, we did a, a really interesting thing um, just this past friday we did a, a, a nursing rehab home on the eastern shore and uh, it was a very unique uh job that we had set up because most times when we do an inspection of a home hotels uh, condominiums things like that for example people are aren't, they aren't there or they're outside or they're waiting in the kitchen almost every room we went in this nursing home obviously there were people in the rooms most of them were still in the bed some of them you know were invalids and they couldn't get out of the bed and uh i was i was so proud because some, some of them throughout the, the we were there for three hours some of them were even being served lunch so I was like, well, this is going to be interesting because we've got people, we've got food laying around, there's medications, all the things we don't want when we're doing an inspection. You know, we have a, a checklist that we give people, but this, was, this couldn't be avoided in this case. And the fact that uh, this was a nursing home and they'd had a bed bug problem, they'd been treated, and they wanted our doctors to come in and clear it. And uh, it started off, they were like, oh, let's just do you know, one wing, we'll do 30 rooms. And then after we did that, they were so impressed, they said, all right, let's just do the whole facility. And we ended up doing over 70 rooms, and a lot of these were double rooms, which means there were two occupants, two beds, two sets of furniture, two sets of closets and drawers. And um, the cool thing about it was um, almost every room turned out to be a therapy visit as well. And we actually had to tell them when we went in, all right, let the dog do his search, and then you can play with them. And, and I, I'm telling you, I, you know, obviously we couldn't take pictures or film it of, with the patients for uh, obvious reasons. But you should have seen the faces light up when we walked in that room. A lot of them, you know, just enjoyed the company. A lot of them had dogs or wanted dogs. And it was, you know, we'd do the search, and the search would take us literally just a, two or three minutes in each room. We'd spend another five or ten minutes in there just letting them pet the dog, whether it was Alvin or uh, Jenny of the two that I took. And they enjoyed it, too. And they were dead tired. When we They slept the whole way back, about an hour and a half drive. But it was, it was, it was not, I mean, I felt good that we had done something good and that the people there got so much out of it too. And of course the staff all came over and, you know, were commenting on the dogs, but I think it was, it was really, it was really cool that the dogs did something good. They, they were busy, they were having fun and the, the patients there really took a lot out of it. So it was kind of a, a neat and a unique experience. Um, but what a challenge that was to keep them uh, on point with all the distractions going on. I was so proud of them and how well they did. And we were able to uh, to make some suggestions to help them out uh, moving forward because they were uh, still undergoing uh, treatments uh, for bed bugs at the time. But uh, you know they were they were being proactive too by making sure that they had the problem knocked down and taken care of, and they were looking out for their patients, which I applaud. And uh, we're now a preferred vendor for them, where we'll be going back uh, to uh, check on things. So it was very cool. And um, you know there have been some some recent issues in the news here. I don't know if you heard about the fire departments. Yep, yep, yep. I yep. Hear that. yeah 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 they uh, actually uh, contacted us at one point to uh um come do some inspections for them and we were looking at working with another uh uh firm another uh, pest control firm about uh helping out with that situation so we'll see where that ends up going and then obviously you know being a resort town here both uh, norfolk and virginia beach um you know relies heavily on tourism in the uh in the summer months but even uh and the other months around here, with everything they have going on in Norfolk, the Visit Norfolk campaign and such, so we're going to, uh, you know, try to do our part and help out and uh, see what we can do there. But uh, if you guys uh, want to learn any more or have any questions about it or you have any uh, any stories you'd like to share, you can also check us out on the web at to detect and to serve dot com. We modeled that after the LAPD's to protect and serve, so that's what we do: to detect and to serve dot com. And you'll uh, you can meet each of our dogs. Uh, and see what they do. Uh, there's videos up there. There's uh, little bios of each of them and our handlers as well. So uh, we'll be bringing you uh, more of their stories as we uh, go along with the show here. And we're going to be back in just a few minutes with uh, Christine Lacoste from PetsAdvisor.com with the Pet News of the Week. You're listening to National Canine Academy Radio on AM 790 WNIS. If you heard Gail Wolpin's opening line, Welcome, ladies. 
Ladies and gentlemen, to the Phoebus Auction Gallery, I'll be your auctioneer for today's auction. And chances are you've been to their auction gallery in the Phoebus section of Hampton. For the past 20 years, between that opening line and the thank you all for coming today, see you at the next auction here in Phoebus, the Phoebus Auction Gallery has been privileged to offer some of the finest, rarest, and most interesting items from ancient to modern history. Going forward, they anticipate selling more fine art, precious metals, antiques, decorative arts, and things to fascinate and decorate your mind and your life. If you have an item or a collection you've accumulated over the years and are ready for it to move to other collections, Collectors, contact them. They'll include your items in their holiday or other special auctions, always live, online, and in their gallery. Their auctions are attended by the world community, and they sell all over the world, and they ship all over the world, too. If you're a collector, they have things to tantalize and excite you. Follow their auctions on the website at PhoebusAuction.com. The Phoebus Auction Gallery, We Recycle the Finest, is not only their motto, but their goal. The next auction at the Phoebus Auction Gallery is Sunday, February 2nd at 10 a.m. Are you going to need dock power and dock lights? Call the electric fisherman. Want a new bait freezer in the garage, but the breaker box is too small? Log on to coalelectricinc.com. Have you made a room addition or added a boat lift and need a panel upgrade? Call the electric fisherman. Scott Cole says fused panel box replacements and service upgrades are his specialty. Serving Southside Hampton Roads for 25 years, Cole Electric, Inc. has helped a lot of us with free estimates and 24-hour electrical services. Call Scott Cole, the electric fisherman, 498-COLE. He is on the cutting edge of structured wiring for home theater, computer, telephone, and whole house stereo. Log on to coalelectricinc.com for your residential electrical needs and get wired into the future. Anglers like to do business with other anglers. 498 Coal, quality electrical contracting and 24-hour service. When your house is in need of attention, call your maid. For your life, your home, call Your Maid. Your Maid is a trained, uniformed, licensed, and bonded cleaning service that cleans your house so you don't have to. Your Maid brings all cleaning supplies and equipment. It's a professional team that deep cleans every room, including bathrooms and kitchens. They vacuum the entire house, dust the furniture, and clean the floors. Your Maid will change linens, remove trash, and do all those things you don't have time to do. They arrive at the scheduled time for a one-time cleaning or regular visits. You'll be surprised to find how little it costs to have your maid do all the work. Their sparkling reputation is reflected in your clean home. Make it a part of your lifestyle. Call your maid today. Do it for your life, your home. Call your maid today at 499-3167 for your free estimate. Your maid, 757-499-3167. And on the web at yourmaidva.com. That's yourmaidva.com. Welcome back to National Canine Academy Radio. This segment is brought to you by PetAdvisors.com. And on the line right now, we have Christine Lacoste with the Pet News of the Week. How are you, Christine? Doing good. How are you? I'm good. Christine? Hey, Dan. How are you doing? Doing good. Happy New Year to you. (laughs) All right. um, Now, what is the first story you have for us about a pit bull puppy that eats underwear? What? (laughs) Wait a minute. (laughs) What kind yeah, of the show first is this? story is uh, a panty caper. <laughs> <laughs> is this your old college story? Very funny. Uh, <laughs> at least uh, three pairs of women's underwear disappeared at the Battersea Dogs and Cats home in London. I had nothing and... to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Some veterinarians there were putting the blame on one of their other rescues. Um, it's a dog named Barney. Barney's um, a pit bull, a pit bull mix puppy. And it appears that his stools gave him away. Um, two pairs of black panties and one black thong were wow. discovered in his deposits. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Four, yeah. by, four by his own stools. We yeah, know. The nine-month-old uh, Staffordshire Bull Terrier was brought to the shelter after he was found roaming the streets in London. And two days later, the first missing garment started turning up when you know he went to do his business. And a couple of days later, another pair showed up, and he took an X-ray, and there's even more underwear in his stomach. Is that how they so found it? When he gets adopted, the new family will definitely have to be warned about his little fetish. <laughs> you know, we actually had a, a boxer who did that at our shop um, a few years ago, and it, it was one of the weirdest calls I know because I, I called the owners up, and uh, you know they'd only been coming for a few weeks, and uh, he, he threw up uh, an entire children's bathing suit. And I remember... I called the owner up, and the, I think the husband dropped him off, and then the wife answered. And I said, "Hi, this is you know Dan from National Canine Academy. So we have uh, you know Tiger here, and um, 
uh, so do you have a like a, a five or six year old daughter? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> I said, well, I have her bathing suit here, and your dog, <laughs> your dog just uh, pooped it out. <laughs> She's like, oh, my God. Apparently, he does that. He ate socks. And this is, again, you know, we talked about things you need to consider. Puppies especially Mm -hmm. will pick up and eat anything. And it's not always funny like this and doesn't always have a a humorous ending. It can cause a GI obstruction, Mm -hmm. which can be an extremely expensive surgery. But, yeah, I mean, they will. They'll rock sticks, socks, Mm -hmm. underwear, bathing suits. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully, the uh, new family will be a little more careful. And uh, thank God he's, he's okay. Yeah, they're going to have to be a little careful with uh, laundry and probably any items around the house that they leave around. Right. Um, what else do you got for us this week? The next story is about a girl service dog that accompanies her in an operating room. And this is almost never heard of, and I'm not sure it's ever been done before. Uh, a girl named Kaylin, who goes by KK. Uh, she's, whenever she's about to experience serious medical problems, she has a service dog, JJ, and the dog can sense it. Uh, she lives in North Carolina and was born with mast cell activation disorder, which causes reactions if she gets too cold, too hot, tired, even just stress can aggravate it. The reactions to it actually are life-threatening. So um, the simple things that most seven-year-olds do, she can't do, and they can trigger a deadly reaction. Um, they found the dog JJ at a nonprofit organization, and when sensing something's wrong with uh, Kaylin, the dog will bark, tug, and pull on her to get her attention. She actually underwent kidney surgery at Duke University Medical Center uh, a month ago. At the request of her mom, the service dog was actually allowed in the operating room, a first for the hospital. Um, They wanted to keep the dog in there because they thought he would alert doctors of any negative reactions the girl might experience during surgery. Luckily, everything went well, and so far, KK and JJ are doing great. That's good. How did they... um... You know, get the dog in there, I mean, I, I'm assuming they, they, I would love to see a picture. They had the dog in scrubs or a gown or something to maintain a sterile environment. It didn't include a picture, but I would imagine um, they would have had to have the dog uh, in one section of the room. And probably, um, I believe that either the handler or the mother was in there with it to control the dog. Mm-hmm. Just to make sure he didn't, you know, walk around, spread hair everywhere. I'm sure they kept him in one position, but I'm not sure they put scrubs on him. <laughs> what? Well, I mean, I, I did that at one point with Lexi and Luger. It's inside our pamphlet. Oh, yeah. Um, now, do you know what kind of uh, medical issue she had? When you, you mentioned something um, about how she had a transplant and all. Did she have, like, seizures or anything, or what kind of well, issues? It says kidney surgery. It doesn't say uh, transplant. Okay. And the issue that she has that she was born with is called mast cell activation disorder, and it causes reactions when she gets stressed, gets tired, gets hot, gets cold. But the reactions themselves, it doesn't go into detail what those are, but they can be life-threatening, and that's what the dog is there to sense those before they happen. Yeah, that's why I was wondering if it was like a seizure or something, and he alerted. Hmm. Huh, doesn't seem to be, but I, they, don't, they don't really give you too much more information on the disorder itself. Yeah, that's cool. It's very interesting. I've never heard of a, a dog going into the uh, OR as a, a service dog. That's cool. Yeah. The next one up is about cats. A uh, recent study found that humans have been bonding for felines for more than 5,000 years. A researcher studied fossilized cat bones from cats believed to have lived in rural farm areas of China 5,300 years ago. Attracted to the area by small animals, cats stay on the grains grown and stored by the farmers. Uh, cats are believed to have eaten food scraps left behind by people. And it's also likely the people fed them directly, and that's how the bond started. Uh, the study examined eight bones from at least two cats. It uh, looks like one of them was thought to be domesticated because it actually lived a pretty long time. Before the most recent studies were performed, it was believed that domesticated cats arrived in China about 2,000 years ago. So this adds about 3,000 more years to the history of the cat. Wow. Man, I didn't realize it had been that long. Dogs everywhere are cringing. Uh, you're, you're having a, a, a negative influence on Damien here. <laughs> <laughs> Damien, while we're talking about cats, Damien hands me his phone. He's looked up something on IncredibleThings.com, which I would say this definitely falls under. And it's a picture of a bag of doggy treats, and it's by Dog Dreams Baking Company. And this is your fault, Christine, for bringing up cats, because that's when he handed this to me. And I'm not kidding you. These treats are called Kitty Poops. <laughs> and they look just like it, too. Okay, that's, yeah, that's great. That. This, all kinds of good habits we're training yeah. here. And uh, it says for very good dogs, for very good boys. <laughs> 
uh, for very good dogs, and I'm sure it's made of something that's palatable for them. But, yeah, only you would find something like that, Damien. Yeah. It got me started with the uh, – I was looking up different things that dogs swallow, and there's everything from uh, rubber duckies to a Wii remote for a video game controller, all sorts of jewelry and mm-hmm. stuff. So, um, Well, you know, uh, when, uh, when Stone came from uh, Canada – the second day I had him, I uh, got him from a breeder in Canada, the same uh, breeder Maverick came from. He uh, he threw up like four or five, you know, rounded off pebbles. And I remember calling his breeder and like, do you have like a you know, gravel area? He's, oh, yeah, yeah. So, well, he just threw up some and there's his name, Stone. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, they will swallow or eat anything. So. Yeah, those are some interesting treats, but of course, you know, if it was Barney the Pity Puppy, it might have to be song shaped. <laughs> <laughs> the edible underwear in the doggy treat oh, aisle. This is a whole show unto itself. <laughs> where, well, where are you taking us now? Uh, moving on with dogs. Uh, have you ever heard of Ricochet? It's a dog in California who actually surfs on the surfboard. Yeah, yeah. I think we've all seen that. Um, this is a story about Ricochet. Uh, military veterans and special needs children in San Diego got a special treat on New Year's Eve. Uh, Gina Gill is a nine-year-old girl with autism, and she was one of the lucky children who learned from the famous gold retriever Ricochet at a surfing camp this past summer. Uh, but her dad, a Marine who was deployed in Afghanistan for 11 months, couldn't watch her progress. Uh, New Year's Eve, he finally got to witness her transformation. Um, the owner of Ricochet, which is Judy Fredono, assisted in, looks like a meeting. They actually got her to surf with the dog, and the dad was able to attend. Uh, the dog proceeded to become a surfing coach for wounded warriors, especially as kids and disabled adults. And on New Year's Eve, Gina's dad, now retired and back from Afghanistan, got to see firsthand the amazing difference the dog made in Gina's life over the summer at the surfing camp. That is so cool. They, they both got to surf, and uh, they said the dad was crying and uh, Rick is just an amazing dog, and it's a great end for a busy year for him. Um, he's received many awards over the years, the ASPCA's Dog of the Year, um, American Humane Association Hero Dog Awards, Emerging Heroes, USA Today's Pet Hero. The list goes on and on. Well, you know, and, and that's the, the effect the dogs will have on you if, you if you let them. If you spend time with them and do what you're supposed to, take care of them, proper care, you will not believe the effect they'll have on you and your, your entire family. And that's, again, you know, the, the book you're writing with me, Beyond the Gray, that's what it's all about is the effect even rescue dogs have had on their, their owners and their new family. So it's so cool to hear stories like that, and everybody benefits from it, not just the dog, not just the, the family, the foundation. It's a win, win, win. Now, Ricochet is definitely one of those dogs that uh, stays in the public eye, continually does good things. She's always, you know, in the news for helping one person or another. So definitely some good deeds as dogs spreading around the town. Nice. You know, I got a uh, an email just a couple of days ago I thought you'd be interested in. Um, somebody just read uh, One Unforgettable Journey, Maverick's uh, story, and uh, she left a form on uh, oneunforgettablejourney.com where you can uh, find Maverick's book. And uh, she's rescued a wine runner of her own and is uh, – um, um, uh, she's a voracious dog owner. She describes herself, and she was deeply moved by uh, the love story that you wrote for us, Christine, uh, called One Unforgettable Journey, and she wants to know where to get a Got Mav shirt. So, you know, two years after after that happened and we wrote the book about it, people are still moved by it and asking for T-shirts and stuff. And, it, again, it just shows you the power of dog. Well, you know, it is the best one runner book on the market right now, so I'm not sure anyone can come out and top that. Right, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that. Well, um, Christine, it was great uh, having you join us on the show again. We'll look forward to having you next week. And uh, tell us more about where we can uh, and what we can find on Pets Advisor. Um, PetsAdvisor.com is the website, and we have information on all different types of animals, not just dogs and cats. And the Pets Advisor buzz is right there in the header, and that's all of our latest news stories, and you can keep up with those during the week. Awesome. Thank you so much, and Happy New Year to you. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you next week. Happy New Year. See you next week. All right. Well, very good. All right, Dallas. Anything else you want to add? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, you've been listening to National Canine Academy on AM 790 WNIS. We will see you guys next week. Dog responsibly. The preceding day commercial program was sponsored by National Canine Academy. WNIS Radio and Sinclair Communications do not endorse or warranty any statements or claims that are made or products or services that are... AM 790 WNIS Norfolk, it's 11 o'clock.